Today's video will be a deep dive into Google Sites and we're going to look at everything you as a teacher need to be aware of and how you can use Google Sites in the classroom. So let's jump into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. Now, as this is going to be a deep dive, I highly recommend that you check out the timestamps down below. Now, at any time during this video, you can pause the video and try it out by yourself. Now, we're going to jump into Google Sites and I'm going to show you how Google Sites can be a fast and easy to use way to not only have student portfolios, but also have a place where you can share resources with your students and it's all part of the Google Workspace ecosystem. So let's get started. Now, before we create our website, there's a few things that are important to mention. Now, the first one being there are multiple ways of creating Google Sites. Now, Google Sites is one file type that lives inside our Google Drive. And so we can always create a new Google Sites file from inside Drive. Now, in order to create that Google Sites file, you're going to navigate to the folder where you want your website to be. Now, here you can right click and then find Google Sites under More. You can also click on the New button and then select Google Sites. This will generate that Google Site and you can immediately get started. So let's go ahead and title our Google Site. Title Website 1. Now that I've titled my website, you will find that that file has also been given this name here in Google Drive. Now there is another way of creating Google Sites and that is by using the sites.google.com URL. Now why would you use the URL over creating a file in Google Drive? Well, you'll get access to a number of different templates. So let's go ahead and have a look at that. We're going to navigate to sites.google.com. Here it opens up the home page, and at the top you will see I get those templates. I can always open up the template gallery and this template gallery presents me with even more templates. You can see we have a student portfolio, club, class. Any of these templates can be used to really save time and get started. In addition to that, because you are part of a Google Workspace environment, you can upload your own templates that are available within the domain. So here on the left hand side, you'll see eduflip.net that is my training domain. And so there are no templates available at the moment, but if I wanted to upload a template, I could do that right here. Now I've already created a website and I'm not going to use a template. So let's go back to that file. I'm going to close this homepage and here we have our file. Okay, we are now inside our Google Sites and what you see in front of you right now is the layout. This is the overview of everything that you will have access to when working in Google Sites. Now the first thing we'll do is look at the top. Here on the left hand side, when we click on that, we will navigate to that home page. This is the same page that you have when you go to sites.google.com. Next to that, we will have our site title. Now we can change this title. It will automatically change up here. However, this area is not part of the title. This is our page header and we can give a completely different title here. So let's just add magical forest as our title. This title is part of the header. Now this header image will be visible on our website. And so we can also tweak this. There's a number of different header types. And by clicking on the header type icon, we can either select a cover, large banner, banner, or title only header. Now these are page specific. So in other words, you can have a different header type for different pages. I'm going to stick to the large banner. And because I don't like this gray background, I'm going to add an image to this. So here you will see that instead of header type, I can also click on change image. Now there's a number of images already built into Google Sites. And when you click on select image, you can choose these images here. You can also use an URL, search for images, pull them in from your albums or your Google Drive. However, I have a file prepared. So I'm going to click on change image and upload. Now this brings me to my file selector. Let's upload this image. It automatically adjusts the image for readability. You can see here I have magical forest and that image. If you want to turn off the readability adjustments, you can click on the icon here and it will turn it off. We're going to leave it on for now. 
Now the next thing we can do with our website is we can add a number of different pages. So on the right hand side you will see we have insert, pages and themes. Let's select pages. We have our home page and when we click on those three dots we can choose to add a sub page to our home page. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to add a sub page titled resources. This page is under home. We can also add another top level page. So let's add another top level page and call this about. And as you can see here on the right hand side in the page selector, home is on the same level as about. Resources, however, is slightly indented and that's because it is a sub page. You can see that here in our navigation, resources is under home. About is a top level page. Now let's say that you want to restructure the order of your navigation. You can always drag and drop your pages. So let's say that I want this resources page to be a top level page. I can drag and drop it right there. And now it is a third top page. Now you can nest pages within pages. So let's put resources back underneath home and let's create a sub page within resources. We're going to click on the three dots and select add sub page. We will have teacher resources as well as student resources. So let's add another sub page, student resources. Now we have the structure where we have home, about, and then within home we have resources and within resources we have teacher resources and student resources. Again, you can click, drag and drop, rearrange everything. Now, as you can see, my navigation is at the top of my website. And when I go to the preview at the top here, I can preview this website. This is what it will look like on a computer, on a tablet or a mobile device. Now, again, the navigation is at the top. Let's say that I want to move that navigation. Well, I can always go to the navigation here and find that cogwheel on the left hand side. When I click on that, I get a number of additional options. And one is the mode of navigation. I can move that to the side. I can also change the color. I'm going to leave it to transparent, but if you chose white, then obviously that would now be highlighted white. Let's leave it to transparent. This is also where you can add your brand images. So if you see brand images here, we can upload a logo, a fave icon. Let's do that now. We're going to upload our logo. That logo will automatically appear in the top left corner of your website. And we can also upload a fave icon. Now the fave icon is the icon that appears when you save a bookmark or when you open it in a browser. So here at the top, this is the fave icon for Google Drive. This is the one for Google Sites. If and when you upload your own fave icon, this will automatically be changed as soon as you publish your website. So I'm going to upload this one. We have a number of viewer tools that we can activate. This means that we can have an info icon, anchor links. I'll talk more about that later. You can always find it in the timestamps below. We also have some analytics where we can integrate with Google Analytics and an announcement banner. Now the announcement banner is a lot of fun and it's really useful whenever you're creating a new website to activate that announcement banner and let people know that your website is under construction. So let's go ahead and create an announcement banner. We can choose the color. I'm going to choose a red banner and I'm going to announce that the website is under construction. Now, in addition to a message in the banner, I could also choose to add a button and a link. So for example, you could link out to your old website or maybe you link out to a resource that you want your students and parents and teachers to have access to, or you can use the announcement banner to link out. Now to demonstrate this, I will link out to my Twitter handle and that way you will see what this looks like in action. So let's go ahead and type in find me on Twitter. And then I will add a link to my Twitter. So this will be the following address. And we're going to open this in a new tab. Next, you have to select the visibility of this announcement banner. Do you want it on every page or just the home page? I'm going to leave it on home page only. Okay, all good and well, we can close these settings. Now these are automatically saved. So let's close the settings and let's navigate to that preview. 
This is the preview. This is my student page. As you can see, my navigation is on the left hand side because we've changed that. And there is no banner at the top because I only activated this on the home page. Now let's open up the home page. On the home page, you see that red banner. It says website under construction. And then there is a button that will automatically open up the Twitter feed. Now this can be any website that you would like to link to. As soon as you're ready to turn this banner off, you can just jump back into those settings, click on the cogwheel and turn off the website banner. I'm going to remove the side navigation and bring it back to the top. Now let's say that you want to add a little bit of design to your website. Well, there's a number of things that you can do within Google Sites that will enable you to do that. Now the biggest one is to add a theme. Now the theme will be an overarching theme for all your pages. And here within the site browser, we have themes and we can select simple or any of these other themes. I'm going to select level. You can see it automatically adjusts the fonts. It adds some color. The navigation looks different. And we can also select different colors down here. So we can go with this green, yellow, or any of these fill colors. I'm going to stick to yellow. You can also select a font style, but then again, these font styles can always be tweaked later on. So for example, when I go to magical, I can select magical and I can change the font here. Say that I want to use Montserrat instead. I can do that by highlighting it and then tweaking that font. So you have a lot more freedom when it comes to fonts within Google Sites when you're actually selecting the text that you would like to see changed and then change the font, change the font style, change the size. Now we've already had a look at the announcement banner. Now let's add a copyright footer. Now a footer is what appears at the bottom of the page. And again, we can have this across all pages on our website. So let's go ahead and navigate down to where it says add footer. We're going to click on that and I'm going to add some copyright information. I'm going to say copyright and then my website. Now this is just an example of how you can use a footer, but this footer will automatically be applied to every page. So when we go back to that preview, you will see at the bottom, we have that copyright notice. When I go to the about page, that copyright notice is still there. Now you could put your social media links there, maybe the school website, maybe a link to where your students can find some additional resources. This is a great place to highlight those links. Now, as mentioned, when you are adding websites to the footer, you can also link out. So whenever you're editing your footer, you will notice that there is an icon here that allows you to insert a link. This way you can get your school's website into the footer of every page on every single website. Now, before we can start adding in content onto our Google Sites, we need to understand about sections. Now, sections are horizontal blocks of information and Google Sites uses these sections to visually break up all the information shared on a website. Now, we've already talked about headers. That is one type of section. We had our footer, which is another section. Now, in between the header and the footer, you can place as many sections as you want and you can decorate these, style these according to your own interests. So let's go ahead and add our first section. Now here, this will become a section. Now we can add in content by either going to the insert page on the right hand side or by double clicking and then selecting either a image, some embed code, a drive file or upload a file. We can also add text by selecting the icon in the middle. Now, if this is the very first time that you're creating a website or a portfolio with Google Sites, I highly recommend you use the insert menu because Google Sites provides us with a number of template sections. This will really speed up the way we can create websites. So here on the right hand side, you will see it says layouts. Now these layouts, these are examples of sections that we can add into our Google Sites. So here we have an example of an image on the left, text on the right, two images, each with text, three images with text, or three images and no text. Let's go ahead and select this first example and click. You can see it automatically adds in that section. Now, if you click on another section, it will add it below that and below that. This way you can very quickly build up a website and as you can see, we have separate sections. This is one section. This is a second. 
this is a third. Now let's say that I want to change the order of these sections. You can always do that by selecting this area, clicking on that, and then simply dragging that section up or down to place it in a different position. Now, in addition to moving sections around, you can color your sections. So here on the left hand side, you'll see this little section background icon. This allows you to select emphasis, emphasis two, and these are pulled directly from the theme you've selected. Or you can also insert an image, select an image or upload an image. So if I choose to upload an image, I can select that file I had and then I can upload that image. And this becomes the background of my section. Now I'm not going to use an image, so I'm going to just go back to section background and select standard. Now, because we've used the insert layouts option, and these are templates, we can now very quickly edit this text. Now let's delete this section. We're going to delete this section and let's work with this section right here. I would like to have a video on the left-hand side and then some text on the right-hand side. Now, because I've used the layout, I don't have to go to insert video. I can simply click on that plus icon. This now gives me the various options of what I would like to insert. I can upload an image or file. I can select the image, choose from Drive or select YouTube. I'm going to select YouTube. And this opens up the YouTube browser. Now you can pop a URL of a YouTube video in here or you can find your own uploaded videos. I'm going to go back to a pre-selected video. I already have this ready to go. And let's go ahead and pop that URL in there. We're going to search for this video and then we can select it. When I click on select, it's automatically pulled in. On the left hand side, you see a little bit of information on this video and we can now add a text. The title will be Dear Migration. And then we can add some more text. Find out all about Dear Migration in this video from National Geographic. There we go. Now, if you wanted to manually do this, well, you could do that as well. So let's go ahead and do this manually. We're going to go to a blank section. I'm going to select insert, scroll down to where it says YouTube video and paste that URL. We're going to find that video and add it in. Now, as you can see, because I'm not using a template, I will have to resize this myself. So let's resize this. There we go. Let's add in a title going to say Dear Migration. We are going to style this title. So let's select title and then add in some more text. Find out about Dear Migration. So you can see that using these predefined layouts saves you a lot of time on building websites. Now there are many more things that you can insert into a Google Sites. So let's go ahead and have a look at the insert menu and let's discuss each of the items available. The first you'll see is a collapsible group. Now a collapsible group is great when you're sharing a lot of information. So for example, here I'm going to type in more info and then here I'm going to paste a paragraph of text all about deer. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of information here. I don't want my students to see everything and cluttering up this page. And that's why I'm using a collapsible. So here we have more info. And when the student clicks on that, they now see all that information. So this collapsible will make it much easier for teachers and students to represent lots of information, yet not clutter up the page. The next element we can insert into our Google Sites is a table of contents. Now, when you click on table of contents, it's automatically going to pull in all the things that are visible on this website. And then when you click on the little eye icon, you can hide this from the navigation. Another element we can insert is an image carousel. So here, when you select image carousel, you will have to upload a number of images. And there is at least two images required to have a carousel. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to select our images. We're going to select. And we're going to search for some deer images. Google images. Let's select this one. We're going to select this image, this one, as well as that image. So now we have four images selected. It has used Google images to find these images. And let's click on insert. Now, as soon as I insert these images, it is double checking, making sure that I want to use all these images. If you don't, you can always remove them here or you can add a text. 
And when ready, simply click on insert. This will insert the carousel onto your Google Sites. You can resize it to whatever size you feel is appropriate for your website. And because it is a carousel, it will automatically flip through the images. So when I have a look at the preview, I can scroll down and now I see my image carousel. This image carousel has a navigation at the bottom, as well as the arrows on the left and right, which allows me to go from image to image to image. Another very useful feature is inserting a button. Now these buttons can link out to various websites or even pages on your own website. So let's go ahead and insert a button. I'm going to click on button, I'm going to say resources. So this will be a button linking out to my resources page and we're going to link it out to the page. Now because I didn't type in a URL, I get an overview of all the pages on my website. So let's select resources and insert. You can see I have my button here. I can always click on the pen to edit this button. But when I go to my preview, whenever someone clicks on that button, they will automatically go to the resources page. Now, why might you use this if you already have pages in your navigation at the top? Well, sometimes you want to hide pages from your navigation. Now, how do we do that? Well, we can go to the pages tab and I can click on the three dots next to the name of this page. Here, I'm going to select hide from navigation. This way, when I go to my preview, at the top in the navigation, they only see home and about. However, scrolling down, when they find that button, when they click on the button, they can still access resources. This is a great way of not cluttering up your navigation at the top or side of your website. We can also insert a divider for the website, which will really clean things up and a placeholder. Now the placeholder is similar to what you saw up here, where you can add in placeholders for various elements such as videos or images. Now if you're going to be creating your own templates that you then upload to your domain, these could be for teachers to use or for your students, placeholders will enable you to really highlight where you would like your students to insert an image or where you want them to upload their pictures or their photos or their videos. This is how you can do that. Scrolling down, we have that familiar YouTube insert and we can also insert a calendar. Now, when we click on calendar, it is going to connect to our Google Calendar. That means it pulls in the calendars from your Google Classroom as well as your own calendars from Google Calendar. Now, I don't have any calendar set up, so I'm going to just take a demo. So I'm just going to take a demo calendar from one of my demo Google Classrooms, Design Thinking 102 and let's insert this calendar. Now this way you can have a calendar with special activities, special days, special events, anything that you would like to share with students or teachers. In addition to that, we can also insert a map. This ties in with Google Maps, a document, slides, sheets, forms, or charts. Now I'm going to highlight how to insert a Google Slides, but the same principle works when you're inserting a Google Docs or even a Google Sheets. Now let's go ahead and click on slides. This will open up all the Google slides that it finds on my drive. And I'm just going to add in a demo slideshow. Let's go ahead and add this in. We can close that side window and we now have our slideshow. Now, as with everything else that we insert onto our Google sites, we can resize this and we can preview what this will look like on the final site. So scrolling down, you will see we have all these elements that we've inserted. And here we have our Google Slides. Now we can navigate through this Google Slide. We can see all the different slides. There we go. Let's close the preview. Now, if you have any other websites that you are using and you would like to bring them into your Google Sites, that too can be done. So if you have the embed code available, you can bring it into your Google Sites. Now I'm going to use Mentimeter as an example, but this could be any website. Maybe it is a Flipgrid. Maybe it is something else that you're using with your students. As long as you have access to an embed code, you can insert this onto your Google Sites. So let's go ahead and open up a different application. Now here I am on Mentimeter and I'm going to embed the presentation. So I'm going to select embed and then go to Google Sites. Now here on Google Sites, I double click and this time I'm going to select the embed icon. 
That opens up an additional menu. I can embed a URL. Go ahead and try. If the website allows you to embed it using the URL, automatically Google Sites will render it into a viewable image. If you have the embed code, you go to embed code and then you can paste that code right there. Now, many external websites and other websites, they will provide you with embed code. Let's go ahead and click on next. We will get a preview of what this will look like and then we click on insert. This way you can embed any format or any other program. So here you can see this is from Mentimeter. Mentimeter is automatically embedded into my Google Sites, but this could be anything I want it to be. Many websites provide you with embed code. And that brings us to the next section. Google Sites is a file on Google Drive. It is part of Google Workspace. Therefore, collaboration is at the heart of everything you can do with Google Sites. At the top, you will see we can add collaborators. So when I click on share with others, I can now share this with say teacher one. So I'm going to find my demo teacher one account and I'm going to make this account an editor. Now, in addition to making them an editor, you can always click on that cog wheel and you can also tick or untick this box. Now, if you do this, you will basically turn off editing, copying, changing permissions for the person you're sharing with. I'm going to leave it as it is, share it with teacher one and then click on send. That now means that Teacher One has the same editing rights as I do, and we can both collaborate, we can work together and develop this website. This is amazing when you're talking about group projects, maybe your students are working together and they're building up a portfolio or they're building up a website for their group project. Well, they can collaborate on this and they don't have to be in the same location. Now, next to the share button, we again have that cogwheel. This brings us to the settings where you have your announcement banners, your brand images and other tools. Now, the one that we haven't discussed yet is the viewer tools. Now, the viewer tools enable you to communicate more effectively with the people visiting your website. So, for example, I can show when the page was last updated. I can also show a contact form and I can use anchor links. Now, anchor links is where you link out to subheadings on a single page. So for example, I can link to the middle of the resources page using those anchor links. Now, how do these work? Well, let's have a look at it. I'm going to turn everything on. I'm going to leave the last updated time, turn on that contact form, turn on the anchor links. Now, when I go to my preview, the first thing our user will see is that at the bottom left, they have a little eye icon. When they hover over that eye icon, they can click on it. And this shows them when the page was last updated. In addition to that, they can click on contact. Now contact will enable them to contact the webmaster or the owner of this website. Here it says that it's not available in preview mode, but once your website is published, contact will automatically enable visitors to contact the owner of the website. This is what those viewer tools look like. And that brings us to the three dot menu next to the settings. Now under the three dot menu, you will find that there is a version history. So when I open up the version history, I can see the changes that were made to the website and also when they were made and who made those changes. We're going to close the version history because under that three dot menu, we also have the option to duplicate our website. Now this will duplicate the entire website. Every page, every image, every link will be duplicated. We can also report a problem. This is where you can leave feedback. Now the team over at Google will read this feedback. So if there's any features that you would like to see added to Google Sites, use the report a problem button to let them know, give your feedback. They read this and then they will action the most requested features. Okay, we are finished building our website. So let's go ahead and publish it so other people can access the website. We're going to click on publish. And here we now have to title our website. I am going to just call this a demo dear website. Now underneath that, we have a number of additional features. Here you can see that at the moment, anyone on my domain can see this website. So you can have published websites that are live for every user on your domain but nobody outside of your domain can access this website. If I click on manage, I can change this. 
When I click on links, I can now change how the website is published. So my draft is restricted and the published site, I can change this to public or I can set it back to just my domain. Now at the moment, I'm going to leave it at just my domain. There's no need for me to make this public for others to be able to access this as it is just a demo website. Let's go ahead and click on done. Okay, I want to publish it as a demo dear website and I'm going to click on publish. All good, the website has been published. We can click on view to preview and see this website. Now this is also the URL that other users can use to access my website. So let's go ahead and test this. We're going to copy this URL and opening up a different user on the same domain, I can now paste that link and access this website. Because of those viewer tools, I can go to the bottom left corner. I can see when it was updated. And now that it is published, I can click on contact and contact the owner of this website. You can leave a subject, leave a message. This will automatically be sent to them. Let's cancel this. Now let's say that you no longer want your website or your portfolio to be public or you no longer need it published. You can always go to the top, drop down arrow, and then here you can unpublish your website. You can also review changes and republish the website, or you can change the publish settings and change that URL. Now let's say that I've made some changes. Let's go ahead and change the about page in a, about me. And let's now publish these changes. We're going to click on publish. And before it is published, you will be asked to review your changes. On the left hand side, it shows you what has been changed and how it will look. On the right hand side, you see what it looks like right now. So this is what everyone else sees. This is what they will see once you agree to these changes. Let's go ahead and click on publish. And now automatically everybody will see the updates that you have added to your website. So time to create your own Google sites. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel, scroll down, leave a comment. Let me know what are your favorite tips and tricks in Google sites. What are some of the features you'd like to see added and what do you feel is missing from Google sites? Now, once you've done that, go ahead and scroll up and click on that subscribe button. Now, next to that subscribe button, you'll also see a join button. That is where you can get some special member perks when you become a flipped classroom tutorial member. Now, we also have a private Discord group. And as soon as you become a member, you'll automatically be invited to that group. Now, I hope you found this helpful. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.